All right, now let's cover the moving average model. The moving average model is used for forecasting. It uses the past forecast errors to predict the next point in time. We refer to the moving average model as the MAQ model, where Q is the order. Mathematically, the moving average model is expressed like this, where Z is white noise and theta is some weight. In the case of a moving average process of order 2, we would express it like this, with parameters going only to t minus 2. Here, we see a simulation of a moving average process of order 2. We will do the same in Python in the next lesson. Again, just by looking at the time series, it is difficult to say anything about it. You can even argue that you can't recognize that it is an ME2 process just by looking at the plot. Therefore, we plot the ACF function. What do you notice? Well, it seems that after lag 2, the autocorrelation is not significant anymore. So now you know that we can use the ACF plot to estimate the order Q of a moving average model. After lag Q, the autocorrelation should not be significant anymore. All right, now let's run some simulations in Python and see this for ourselves. All right, so with the theory of the moving average process covered, we are now ready to apply it in Python. And I will start off by importing the libraries that we will need for this project. So from statsmodels.graphics.tsa plots, let's import plot ACF. Then from Stats models .tsa .arima process. We will import arma process, and from stats models .tsa .arima .model, we will import arima. We will also need from stats models .tsa .stat tools. We will need ACF. And of course, matplotlib.pyplot as plt and numpy as np. And finally, the Jupyter Magic matplotlib inline. Awesome. Once this is done, I will set the uh, figure size for this notebook. So plt.rc params figure.fig size. And I will set it equal to 10 by 7.5. Awesome. And now we are ready to start off by simulating a moving average process of order two. So I will quickly write here, simulate MA2 process. And the process will have the following equation. So it's gonna be that Y at time T will be equal to 0.9 Z at time T minus one. And then we will add 0.3 Z at time t minus 2. So as you can see, because we have t minus 1 and t minus 2, we then have a process of order 2. Awesome. And so to simulate it, we first need to define both an MA2 array and an AR2 array. I know we haven't talked yet about AR, the autoregressive portion, but it will be the subject of the following lesson. So for now, let's define our ME2 array, which is the array containing the coefficients for the lags for the moving average process. So ME2 is gonna be a NumPy array. And then we start off with the coefficient at lag zero. Now, as you can see at T minus one, the coefficient is 0 0.9, T minus two, the coefficient is 0 0.3. So at lag zero, T minus zero or T, well, the lag is equal to one. And technically, the coefficient at lag zero is almost exclusively equal to one. So the array should always start with one. And then we move on. So the coefficient at lag zero will be 0 0.9 and coefficient at lag two is 0 0.3. And those are the coefficients for our moving average process. And now for the purpose of simulation, we also need to specify the AR process. In this case, we do not have an AR process, and so the array will be equal to zero. So numpy array. However, the coefficient at lag zero is always one, okay? So one here, but then we put zero and zero. And this way, we say that there is no autoregressive portion here. 
Perfect. And now you can quickly print uh, both arrays uh, just to show what it looks like. And no surprise here, those are simply two arrays. Uh, the first one with our ME process, the coefficients, so 1, 0 0.9, 0 0.3, and the other one, 1, 0, 0 for the AR process, and in this case, it's going to be null because we have 0 uh, for both lags 1 and 2. Now we are ready to simulate the process. So MA2 process is going to be equal to ARMA process, pass in both arrays, so AR2 first and then ME2, and then we will generate some samples, so generate sample, and specify the number of samples, in this case I will set it to a thousand. Awesome! And with this done, we can plot our simulation. So plt.plot the ME2 process, let's give it a title, so plt.title will be the moving average process of order two and we are ready to show the plot and you should get something similar to this again it might differ a bit in your case because there is some difference in initialization now this is a bit hard to see that it is an ME2 process right there are a lot of samples here it almost looks like white noise to us so let's just zoom in on a part of the graph so I will say that plt.plot uh, ME2 process uh, I will still give it the same title, so plt.title uh, moving average process of order 2. And now I will set a limit on the x-axis, so only between 0 and 200. That way we can zoom a little bit on the plot. And now you should get the following. So as you can see, a bit clearer how the uh, time series is behaving. Awesome, and now let's test uh, the ACF. So as you know, if the ACF of an MA process, purely MA process, uh, we should not see significant peaks after the order. So that means that if we plot the autocorrelation function now, we should not see a significant peak after lag two because we are simulating an MA process of order two. So let's check that for ourselves. Let's plot the ACF of our ME2 process and I will specify that the maximum number of lags here to be equal to 20 and semicolon and you should get the following now as you can see at lag 0 the it's always equal to 1 so that's expected that's okay and then lag 1 lag 2 are significant but after that everything is uh, non-significant because everything is in this light blue area so as expected, uh, we are indeed in the presence of an MA2 process, right? Because there are no significant peaks after lag 2. Awesome. Now let's try to model our simulation to see if we can get back the parameters that we set up at first. So we are going to model it and see if we can get back 0 0.9 and 0 0.3. All right. So going back down, I will say that the MA model is going to be equal to ARIMA and I will pass in the data of the ME2 process and then the order is going to be equal to 0, 0 and 2. I know this is something that we haven't seen just yet but for now let's just say that 0 here means for the AR process so we don't have an AR process here so it's going to be equal to 0. This is order of differencing we haven't seen this yet so we set it to 0 as well and this is the order of the MA process. And because we know we have simulated an MA process of order 2, we can specify here that we want a, an equation, a model, right, of order 2 for the MA process. And then enforce stationarity. I will set it equal to false. And then we are going to fit the model right away. And then let's print out a summary of the model. So MA model dot summary and let's run this cell and you should get the following so as you can see uh, we have our coefficients here so for the lag 1 we get 0 0.92 and for lag 2 we get 0 0.29 so still very close right we had 0 0.9 and 0 0.3 and the model gives us 0 0.92 and 0 0.297 awesome and so that's it for the simulation of an MA2 process so thank you very much for taking this free preview with me. As always, there is a link in the description below if you want to take the full course. 
the link will have a promo code applied to it already. So you can click on the link and you will get the course with 87% off. And if by any chance you click on the link and the promo code has expired, feel free to send me an email. It will also be in the description and I will send you a coupon code so that you get the course on sale. So thank you very much and I'll see you on the next one.